sorry, Sony. Not a nice thing to do to a phone. This week on Always On, we unbox the fabulous new phablet, LG's Optimus G Pro. And we go all Willy Wonka on Sony's Xperia Z phone. Plus, we give the MacBook Pro to a professional photographer to try it out. That's chocolate phone art. Always On is on. I hurry hard. I hurry. I talk away. It's really hard to get on there. Welcome to Always On. I am Molly Woods. And I'm Jeff Kanata. And this is the show where we take a look at the tech that's part of your life. And your future. It is official, people. Big phones are the next big thing. That's right. And one of those big, big phones is LG's Optimus G Pro. That's right. And we have one in the studio to unbox. So let's get right to it. So last week we had the HTC One. It was and awesome. You was wanted a, a bigger cool. phone. I wanted a bigger phone. And guess what? LG has delivered. We got a big phone. For a second. Okay, feel this box for a second. Yeah. Now this is serious That's like business. A beefy box. Yeah. Even the yeah. LG Optimus G Pro is inside here. That's a fancy box. Yes. Right, let's uh, let's unbox this fancy box. I know. Do we need a knife or can we peel? Yeah, I, think we I think so. Did we do it? Yes, we did. It's like a jewelry. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, now that is a bigger phone. Wow. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's enormous. That's pretty big. Look at actually. this guy. That's pretty large. Pretty large. Oh, pretty large phone. Well, clearly the battery isn't in it because it weighs nothing. Oh wow. The ba well, the battery is huge, which we'll tell you about in a minute. Huh. Oh look, we have our cute like. It's like a tile backsplash. Ooh, we have our cute Korean manual. Oh fun. We has it cartoons. Gun? You did not. I did. You did. Oh, oh my gosh. Is that oh little... my god, that's rad. Yeah. Like, ask and you shall receive. There is, in fact, a little Gangnam Style picture in the oh, <laughs> Do you see the, the cool, like, tile backsplash? <gasps> Ooh. Of, of backings. It's like the Matrix, but in snowy white. You got 500 oh, pretty. points of something. I have 500 well. points of something in Korean. Quad beat ear phones. Awesome. Because dual beat is just too, too few. <laughs> if we weren't doing a show right now, I'd totally high five you. <laughs> All right, we got our mini USB cable. Here's the battery. The battery is, uh, oh, it comes with two. Those batteries. That's a nice touch. That is a nice touch. All right, let's get one of those batteries in here and turn this? this thing on. Right, oh, do you, can, a... you, can you charge a, the battery by itself? Whoa, that used to be like a that's $50 really cool. accessory for various phones. Huh. Nice. Look at that, just stick it right in. And you always have a spare ready to go. I love that. Amazing. Let's turn it on. It's ginormous. It's not that big. It is. It's <laughs> ginormous. It's officially it's not ginormous. That big. It's no big deal. Come on. Up, oh, up. Oh, there we go. There we go. The bottom button flashes two different colors. Look. Oh. It's flashing. See, oh. like you got the green oh. and the blue and the. No, now you know. You ready to go to the rave? SK Telecom yeah. full HD technology. Yeah, it's a little raver. This is very, very Korean phone. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's way it's funny you average. should mention. <laughs> All right, we're going to attempt to go through a Korean language setup, which should be fun for everybody. <laughs> but you, meanwhile, will get the specs. <laughs> the LG Optimus G Pro has a 5.5 inch full HD IPS screen. That screen has a 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution at 400 pixels per inch. It is, in sum, a very nice screen. It has a Snapdragon 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor and runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. It's a big phone, 5.87 inches tall and three inches wide. It has micro USB, micro SIM, and micro SD card slots, and two gigs of RAM to power the processor. The front facing camera is two megapixels, and the rear facing camera is an impressive 13 megapixels with flash. The Optimus G Pro supports NFC, and it's also capable of wireless charging. The battery in this phone is large too, 3,140 milliamps per hour. LG says the handset will last seven hours with video playback and that you'll get 22 hours of talk time. We'll obviously test that, but those are pretty impressive claims. It's also, as if you needed more, 4G LTE capable. He can't, he can't stop looking at Do it. You, is it just in my head that Dreamweaver is playing? <laughs> 
Because I'm falling for this phone. <laughs> because it's the perfect phone. I have the Note 2 here to compare. Is the brightness down on that phone? Because this seems Because the screen on there is just it's gorgeous. amazing. And you can tell because of the size of the screen. I'm telling you, I am starting to think that this is the perfect phone. I, Samsung may announce the Note 3 shortly after, and then we'll see. But this phone is rocking my world right it's, now. It's, oh, wow, look how pretty it I is. I know. We have a phablet convert on our hands. I want it. Mm -hmm. All right, unfortunately, eventually, we're probably going to have to break this. But before we do, we're starting with the Sony Xperia Z. Now, the big selling point of that phone is that it's supposed to be waterproof. So I thought, huh, you could submerse it in water. What other or kinds of things? Or you could go could all Augustus Gloop on it. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're here at Dandelion Chocolates. You are kind enough, Greg, to let us submerse the Sony Xperia Z, which I have here in my handy dandy apron pocket, in multiple kinds of chocolate. Indeed, we're going to use both chocolate directly out of melanger. The melanger is what we use to grind the cacao and the sugar down to make the chocolate itself. And then we're also gonna take chocolate from the tempering machine, and that's the final chocolate that we make bars out of. The Sony Xperia Z, as you probably know, the selling point for this phone is that it's supposed to be waterproof. So we obviously thought, well, waterproof must also mean chocolate proof. How likely do you think it is, working here in this factory every day, that one of these phones could end up in one of those big vats of chocolate? At some point, phones have certainly ended up in vats of chocolate. Not here, but somewhere. <laughs> you guys are really careful. <laughs> We're very careful. So we should get right to it. And before we start, I do just want to say that I really like the Sony Xperia Z, and so I hope it's OK. I'm going to give it like a little mwah, like a blessing. OK, so first up, we've got our little chocolate container. And we're just going to pour some chocolate on there. All right. Oh my goodness. Watch your shoes, everybody. Oh my god. Oh, sorry, Sony. Remind me again what temperature this chocolate is at. This is probably right around uh, 125, 130 degrees right now. OK. Yes, and there's a phone buried somewhere in there. There's a phone in there. <laughs> Should we get a spoon and get it out? <laughs> I'm gonna squeegee first. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, this looks so cool with the squeegee. Come on out, Sony. Ugh. Stuck to the bottom a little bit. The back is totally unchocolated, so that's good. <laughs> and then squeegeeing this phone is like the funnest thing I've ever done. See, this is where, once again, the awesomeness of the raised power button comes into effect. Let's see if it comes on. Oh, totally. I can scroll through the menus. Doesn't seem particularly worse for wear. Now, this chocolate is so thick, that there's really kind of no way for it to get into ports, but certainly the waterproofness should prevent that. I'm gonna try to take a picture. Oh yeah, look. Camera's working fine. Okay, so I think test one, a resounding and delicious success. Pretty much any day in which I get to squeegee a phone is a good day. <laughs> Chocolate <laughs> off a phone with a squeegee is even better. It's holding up pretty well. Yeah, I'm surprised. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we hand off the MacBook Pro to a pro photographer for a road test. And it's part two of the world's most delicious torture test. This time we go cold chocolate. So cold. Welcome back. Now the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. Pretty small laptop, but it's aimed at professional photographers. Right. So we decided to go find one and see if he could actually make it work on the job. I'm so curious as to what he has to say. OK, so Frederick, you're a pro photographer. You are, in theory, the perfect market for the MacBook Pro 13-inch with Retina display. So what I want you to do is take this and use it as your, ideally, your primary machine for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Use this little GoPro right here mm -hmm. to record your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually even going to accompany you on a photo shoot yes. to see what you think. I'm excited. Can yeah. I tell you I'm excited about the computer? 
but I'm really excited about this too. <laughs> See, now that is a photographer talking. I love it. I'm like, oh, computer, yeah, go bro. I will. Good luck with your two toys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm excited to play with this new 13-inch MacBook Pro that I have here. Thank you, CNET. And uh, especially excited to play with it to compare it with this, my existing or my own computer, which is this 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is the Retina Display model. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing out of the box. Here's the box. Brand new box here. And there it is. One hand. Open this one up. So there's a 15 inch and it's baby brother, the 13 inch. It just feels so much lighter. I know it's only a couple pounds lighter, but it just feels so much lighter. I don't know, I know it's the same size keyboard, but I even feel like I can type faster on this one. I don't know, it's something about that small screen that just makes it feel like it's a little bit more intimate than the large screen. Like it feels like work versus not so much work. I don't know. My first impressions of it were, first of all, I loved it. It's just light. I love the weight of it. The initial disappointment and surprises, I guess, were that this one had less hard disk space for my apps and media, and then also the RAM. So the RAM on this thing maxes out at eight, where I can, I can go to 16 on the, on the 15. Okay, now I'm gonna download Lightroom, because that's the software we're gonna be using when I photograph the model. Turn to your right just a little bit. Here you go, right there. Hold it. Beautiful. Okay, turn to the left just a little bit. Look off into the distance. Good, just like that. Hold it. Beautiful. She's very photogenic. The big thing that I loved about the device is, you know, aside from just opening it up in that new toy feel, was just being able to get my work done on it. Being able to use Lightroom in a usable manner with this device and being able to do it anywhere. You know, words can't really describe how cool it is to be able to do your photography work and then pack, pack up your computer and slip it in your camera bag and go. You know, coming from an 11 inch MacBook Air initially and then having a 15 inch the 13 inch fits right in the middle. It's the Goldilocks computer for photographers. And I say that because of it gives you some of the power of the 15 inch and some of the weight savings of the 11 inch. It's right in the middle. It's great. If I was going to make a recommendation to photographers, I'd say get it if you care at all about weight. Now, I did not think that this laptop was going to work out for Frederick or any professional photographer, but he told us afterward that he went and bought his own. Yeah, he liked it enough that he wanted to buy it. Yeah, we actually sold one. Is that the point of the road test to actually sell products for Apple? We evidently are doing that now. <laughs> we'll see if we sell products for Sony next because it's part two of our chocolatey torture test. I think we're going to sell chocolate bars. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have tried our kind of raw, viscous chocolate. Now we're gonna go for tempered chocolate. The temperature's a little cooler, more about like 110 degrees, but it's a lot less viscous. It's meant to be made into a bar. So I think it could be a little slippery, but also get in the cracks a little more. I'm gonna put it in our container here. Then I'm gonna cover it with tempered chocolate, and then it's gonna go into the freezer to set up into a nice, yummy chocolate bar. Here we go. Oh, wow, that's a lot of, oh, geez, oh, oh, that's so much chocolate. Not a nice thing to do to a phone. All right, come with me over here. I wanna make sure my phone is well and truly coated, and we're gonna make it into a chocolate bar by putting it in the freezer. Oh, beautiful. Here you go. See you in 15 minutes. Let's see if our Xperia Z chocolate bar is nicely set up. Oh yeah. That is looking delicious. <laughs> it's so helpfully right in the shape of a chocolate bar. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. That's chocolate phone art. And it looks super tasty. I hurry hard, I hurry, I talk away. It's really hard to know on there. 
it's not actually possible. Okay, I got him. I think there's really only one way to break this chocolate up and get it out of here. It's starting to crack a little, but I'm assuming we're just gonna have to do like a mini drop test. Maybe one more. Okay, one, two, three. It's kind of like ice. If we can give it as many clues to its origins. Okay, really the key is just to uncover our power button, which I think I have done. It's like a little stuck, a little, little frozen slash encrusted. It doesn't really want to push. Oh, I got it. It thawed. How's it doing? <gasps> it's okay. It's fine. It's on, that's great. But you know, there's still really a lot of chocolate on here. So I think it's gonna need like a little bit of a bath. Let's go wash it off. It's supposed to be waterproof. This is like the least of the things that could happen to it today. Nice hot water, really peel this chocolate back here. Oh yeah, we're getting some meltage. I see our screen is going a little crazy. Look that chocolate is messy stuff. As you might imagine, considering it's supposed to be a waterproof phone, it's not having too much trouble with the water here. It's mainly just the, the chocolate in its joints. Okay, let's see. I gotta say, this is pretty remar it is pretty remarkable to give a phone like a complete sink bath and have it just not have a problem. It could use some detailing, but all in all, I think our Sony Xperia Z has passed the chocolate test with flying colors. Wow, I would never have guessed that phone would stand up to that kind of treatment. Yeah. Hot, cold, gooey chocolate, that's really impressive. I know, smashing and banging the hot water. The people at the chocolate factory, I think, are gonna buy a lot of those. Phones. I just love that you can wash it. Very cool. All right, people, it's time to read some of your mail. We got a lot of feedback about the Chromebook Pixel, and a surprising number of people don't seem to have a problem with the 32 gigs of storage. I know you all live in the cloud. For example, this email. I heard in episode 30 how you said the Chromebook only has 32 gigabytes of space. While this may be true, Google has a brand and is trying to push Google Drive's 100 gigabytes for $20 a month or a year. I'm not sure which one. Personally. <laughs> That's a pretty big difference. It's, uh, but okay. You know what, either way I'm paying it, he says. No. Uh, personally, I have fallen in love with Google Drive because everything simply happens in the cloud and syncs. This was the reason I went Chromebook. Plus, if you add up the fact that it is less likely to get a virus or crash or get malware, and the fact that you don't have to worry about loosing, loosing your files, it is well worth it. He Plus, means like, because you won't get hacked, so you don't have to worry about loosing your files out into the world. Yeah, you when can you keep get them hacked. Tight. Uh, plus, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that 100 plus 32 equals 132. And the last time I checked, 132 is more than 128. And then the all caps shouting begins. And who could forget about flash drive space? Exclamation point, exclamation point. Just saying. So in his defense, he is just saying. Love the show, even way back to the Buzz Report days, your loyal fan, Jack. Can you do that in nerd voice? Because wow. 130, I mean. That, it's, he makes true. solid points, but what if I don't have, I, I have a portable computer because I want to take it places, and the places I take it aren't always gonna have internet connections. Yeah. I mean, he has well articulated the entire value proposition that is the Chromebook or the Chromebook Pixel. Yes. It's just that for some people that doesn't always work. Plus, drive went down the other day and it was a pain in the butt. Just saying. Word. I'm just saying back. All caps. I'm also just saying. All caps. Moving on. Uh, Anonymous writes in and says, hey Molly and that other guy. That's me. I'm the other guy. <laughs> yeah. You've made it. I've arrived. <laughs> I was wondering, I saw the SGS4 launch and I do think it's cool, but then I also like the HTC one, so I was wondering what one is better to get? There's a lot of question marks there. The HTC One or the Samsung Galaxy S4. Love you, Molly, and that other guy. Hope you can do this. Thanks. Heart ya. Oh, this is my favorite email so far. Oh, he's your biggest fan, other yes. guy. <laughs> I am. Totally. I can't wait till I have name recognition. Was there a question there? Oh, yeah. Galaxy S4 versus HTC One. Well, what would you say? I mean, the HTC One is the only one I've had hands on up to this point. The S4 I haven't actually seen. Right. So I'm going to have to say you got to try them both out because it's sort of a personal preference thing. They're super similar which is exactly the problem 
that I think HTC is having because yeah. Samsung has better name recognition. Exactly. I, I would say HTC is the other guy of phones, and therefore yes. I recommend it. Me too, because we, <laughs> we're all about the other guy here. Keep the feedback coming, everyone. His name is Jeff Kanata. <laughs> Email us, Molly or Jeff. At, or both. <laughs> or both. At always on at CNET.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+. That's it for this week. Next week, we take the MacBook Pro out into some pretty rough terrain, and we are not nice to it. Not really. Also, the LG Optimus G Pro gets a road test. All that and more coming up next week. Thanks for watching Always On. See ya. It is official, people. Big phones are the next big thing. <laughs> That's right. And one of those big, big phones is LG's Optimus Pro. Damn it. <laughs> Why? There's so I many like, G's I and pros in there. <laughs> LG's and pro G's. Uh. I, like, I felt it coming too, the like the freak out where you're just like, I'm going to get it right out of. Optimus G. Optimus G Pro. LG's Optimus G. Okay. Oh, geez. I know. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, geez.